So we, we implement a lot of management tools. We use Asana, for example. Yeah. We're, we're able to track uh, the products. So for right now, we have close to 50 products in our pipeline. And so we understand that we have buckets and we have different stages of each product. And so we've created different systems uh, and each of the products has to go through each of these systems in order to get to launch and beyond. So um, at any given time, we might have a lot of products that we're just experimenting and looking at. And then we have a lot of products that are in research or sample phase or ready to be launched. And um, you know, we're revising, for example, the, the boxes and artwork and content and then it's ready and launch, and then it's in launch phase. And then, you know, it grow, goes through growth phase, and then after growth phase, it might eventually, hopefully, get to, like, uh, you know, a phase where it's just in cruise control. And, uh, but that whole process might take, you know, a year or more, depending on how long and hard the launch is, how competitive the product, things like that. So uh, we're constantly just updating the Asana, working with, trying, our, trying to grow our team, working with our team to handle different aspects of, of those phases. The lesson there was that when after it failed, um, I realized that people aren't going to Amazon and they're not, they're not searching for uh, bricks with lights in them or Lego kit with lights. And if they are, they want to buy Lego. So really the breakthrough for us was, okay, it's really important to map out how your success is going to look before you even choose the product. How are people finding similar products and are those keywords that you will convert on? And that was the big clicking point. That lesson alone, even though we only lost a few few hundred units, we ended up with a lawsuit losing close to 50 or more thousand. That, that lesson alone will make me millions of dollars because from that point forward, I wouldn't choose a product unless I had a really clear path to, to ranking proper keywords for it. And keywords became the foremost part of our research. And, um, and from that point forward, I think we've been close to an 80% success rate. A lot of the tactics that used to work for launching and all these launch services and cheating your way to the top in a sense, um, a lot of those loopholes are closing. And I think that the people that do the proper research and understand keywords better and understand the data better and choose better products, they're going to have a massive advantage in the future. Um, second to that is that you need to be focusing on growing your audiences off of Amazon. So you need to be focusing on building Facebook groups, you need to be focusing on uh, growing messenger lists and chatbot lists because those are people that you're going to be able to call on when it's time to launch that can serve as a, a launch list for you. And you can work with those people in ways that you normally can't with random customers. And so with the way that Amazon's moving, they're closing loopholes where certain URLs will get your account suspended. And this is only as of this week, we've seen a few people that are like, I just did this launch and now I'm suspended and that's the only thing I've done. So. We don't know if it's the fact that they used a lot of 90% off or whether they used a specific URL, but it was probably a combination of the two. And I think that things are moving in that direction. The other thing is that we know that review, cheating on reviews is going to get you suspended and that they're getting better at tracking the data and tracking where those reviews are originating from. That a lot of the tactics being used by a lot of the sellers overseas are just not working anymore. And so my wife being from China, um, monitors a lot of that like we we're in WeChat groups where people talk about how their accounts get suspended on a like on a regular basis now because they were using these tactics that they were taught at a random seminar in Shenzhen or whatever and so because things are getting harder for everybody the better you get at this the better it's going to be for you and so it becomes more about the data it becomes more about making better decisions and how big of a list you can you can create off of Amazon so you're going mostly just to see new ideas. The goal at every single time we go to a show is to take a picture of the products, maybe take a picture of the cards so you can ask questions later, and then, and then move on, and then do the research later, and determine whether that's a good product. If you find that it's a good product, then you do the deeper dive later to find the real source, find the factories that can deliver a good product. And oftentimes you're gonna find a better price from a real factory like on 1688, for example. Mm. And so um, for the most part, we're going for ideas. We're going to visit factories and relationships that we've already established. Um, we're better at taking notes, less, less naive about building relationships that, of people that are just brokers type of, type of thing because we don't need to waste time dealing with people like that. The way that we look at things is that we want to understand how, our, how the sellers we're about to compete with are getting their sales and how we need to evaluate how good they are at Amazon. Because why would we choose a product? There are millions of products. Why would we choose a product that is a very low opportunity and all the sellers are very good at Amazon? They're already saturated and crushing that market. 
um, it would be a high risk product. So we have two different scores that we give each product. We give a, sc uh, a score to opportunity, and the way that we define that is that that's the number of keywords that people are, that are, that are relevant, that people are using to buy that type of product. So that's a relevancy score and an opportunity score. The second thing we do is we evaluate risk. Now risk has a couple different ways that, you, that, that, are, that it's impacted. One is that all of the sellers are good at Amazon. That means that we're diving into a market where it's already saturated. We know we're going up against a lot of sellers that uh, are good at Amazon. The other thing is cash flow outlay and capital outlay. So if we're going to be exposing a lot of capital, that obviously is a part of evaluating risk. So once we evaluate how risky it is and how much opportunity there is, and we evaluate a lot of products, then the cream naturally rises to the top and we're able to, to choose which products in our pipeline we want to do. So if we look at 100 products, for example, we'll probably have 10 or 20 that are low risk, but good opportunity. And so I'll dive into a little bit about what opportunity means. Let's say we look at a product and it only has six good keywords. And by good keywords, I mean with at least 500 search volume that, um, that, are, that are relevant. So the top sellers, people are only, there's only six ways people really search for it and buy it. That's a, that's, that's a low opportunity score for me. And the reason I wouldn't do that product automatically is because I know that it's gonna be very easy for competitors to compete with me. They're gonna get lucky and be able to find those keywords. They don't need to know how to, how to do the research that I, that I do in order to find those keywords. They can just get lucky and do it. So I'm gonna have a lot of competition. So even if I'm one of the first to market, I'm thinking to myself, how is this product gonna survive for the next year, two years? What's the life cycle of this product if, if there aren't a lot of ways people are searching for it and I, can't, I don't have a competitive advantage over the next guy that decides to do this product? So just to dive in on that a little bit. So you're saying that, okay, you know, if there's six keywords, it's like there's six fish in a, in a bowl and everyone's going for it, right? So you're looking for more, where are some of those longer tail keywords or more that have over that 500 search volume and there needs to be, there needs to be breadth there for it to be interesting for you to go in. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if I don't see at least um, 15 to 20 and anything between 20 and 40, I would consider medium opportunity. And I would say that that's something that I would consider doing depending on how good the competition is. So then I, it would pass that test. Anything with more than 40 keywords that are relevant with at least 500 search volume is very high opportunity. That's a product that people are finding it many different ways. And it might be just because there's a lot of ways to describe the product or there's different sizes and variations or whatever it is. And so what I'm able to do is rank my products for the majority of those keywords, whereas I know my competition likely is not gonna be able to or even find those, product, those keywords in the beginning to begin with. So if I find like the ones with 40 keywords uh, and then the competition is low, that's, that's a low, low risk, high opportunity product.